Hi, Monica. Hey, Nanda. It's none of our business. 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 Last time I talked to you, I was talking to you about my stupid fucking foot. Can we say fuck on this? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a little late for that. <laughs> <laughs> and also, who's going to censor us? <laughs> right. Good point. You know how these podcasts work? <laughs> we Because we just edit them ourselves. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> or you do the editing. Yeah, I have to do everything around here. <laughs> You're like the mom. I love that. I love that. Okay. So, last week we were talking about my leg and I've been hopping around on this leg since (laughs) July like I haven't been able to do shit and so I decided to ignore it this week and start exercising so I've been going to spin I've been is it like fake it till you make it or are you pushing through the pain or what I'm no what I'm not trying to push through the pain what I'm doing is every time I feel the pain I just change the exercise a bit so for instance on a spin bike it hurts to stand but if you put all the weight at the back of the bike then you're you're using your ass in, the, in yeah. your back of your legs, right? Yeah. So it, it's it's a lot better. But so it's inflamed and it's swollen. And because I'm actually doing all kinds of shit, I'm not supposed to. But yesterday I went to something called shockwave therapy. Oh. Yeah. So shockwave therapy is when they use some kind of sound. I will have to fucking look it up. Sound vibration or something to shock the muscles and it feels like a thousand elastic bands hitting the area is it different than those like dr hose things yes okay. much much different because hmm. the dr hose things is like a contraction like it contracts yeah. the muscles and this is something that's it's a sound wave that looks like an have you ever had an ultrasound machine like for sports therapy it's like a looks like a dildo and it like runs up and down i've had <laughs> do you know what a dildo looks like uh, never seen one. <laughs> oh i've got lots i'll bring them next time I have, I've had internal ultrasound, like when I was going through a miscarriage no, and it looked like different. a dildo when they went inside me. It's a little bit different. It's like a, some kind of a wand and they put it on parts like your Achilles heel and it just brings, um, it brings some kind of vibration. It's a sound vibration thing as well. And it brings heat or something to the area and heals it. Well, this is the same thing, but it's actually kind of painful. So it, it has this level from one to 10. And like I said, it feels like a thousand elastic bands. How long does that happen for? Well, I think that I was doing it, like my sister did it for me oh. because she has one of these machines. She's got a, a clinic, okay. Sundance Chiropractor <laughs> Clinic in Calgary, which is very good. <laughs> Not a sponsor. <laughs> Not <yet>. a sponsor. <laughs> Anyways, you can do this for a tennis elbow or for Achilles heel or for areas where it's like tendon based or whatever. So anyway, she like beat the shit out of me for about 30 minutes. And she must have loved that. Yeah, she does. She, <laughs> she does. And so I don't really know if it's better or not. Like yeah. I keep on thinking, this is going to be the thing. Yeah. This is going to be the thing that fixes me. And so it happened last night and like maybe it feels a bit better. Do you ever think sometimes it's just like maybe I'm just always going to have this? I can't. I do think that <laughs> because... And I'm feeling totally fucked and mad. I feel mad about it. But I don't want to accept it because you know what happens? I don't exercise and I'm not a type of person who can't exercise because first of all, I'm angry. And (laughs) second of all, it just, when I'm not exercising, I get fat. Like I can eat 1500 calories a day and not exercise and I just see my weight fucking yeah. climbing and it's not fair because <laughs> life's it's, not fair monica <laughs> you know what <laughs> fuck you <laughs> obviously i haven't exercised today because yeah. angry monica is coming out <sighs> well after this you can exercise okay so enough about your body what okay. else is going on so a girlfriend of mine called me yesterday and she was telling me like their office is in their office we're not okay and she was telling me that one of the guys tested positive for covid and I'm like, holy, holy fuck, that's so scary. And she said, yeah. And the worst part is, is he came to work two days ago coughing and hacking. And he was like, oh, yeah, I'm fine. It's just a cold. And he closed the door. And now their entire office has been shut down and everyone has to be tested for COVID. And no one's not allowed to, no one is allowed to come back to work until they have negative tests. And I'm just thinking, 
fuck how selfish so does he have the ability to work from home easily or is yeah he, okay yeah, so yeah. that's what makes him but, a douche okay guy. even if he didn't even if he didn't i think it uh, my struggle is and i'm not saying he's not a douchebag i just know a lot of people who work in the let's say the trades or the something where they're paid hourly yeah and they need every hour every dollar you know or you know I, I'm, I'm not saying this is right. I'm just saying I know okay. where people's brains go. Yeah, I know. They will say, okay, well, I haven't been around anybody with COVID. It can't possibly be COVID. It's just a cough. I've had a cough before. That's what this feels like. It's probably just a cough. Do you know what I'm saying? That Do you think that may be where his brain went? I don't fucking give a shit where his brain was because right We're now in a pandemic motherfucker right now if you have a runny nose you need to be tested like your kids are in daycare what are the rules can they come to daycare coughing oh no definitely not but i think they've loosened up on the runny nose thing because every kid yeah. almost always has a runny nose although yeah. to be honest i was expecting my kids to have to stay home a lot since school started and it hasn't happened yet. None of them have had runny noses or anything. So I want maybe like this whole hand washing thing is working. <laughs> like people are actually not spreading weird. <laughs> but but back to the whole, you know, if you're in a trade. Well, my son is in a trade. Yeah. He works on a construction site as a as an electrician, and he got a cold. And the rules on the construction yeah. site is you have a cold, you go home but until he, you're tested. He works for the union, right? Yeah. Okay. So though they're way stricter there. What I'm just saying, there's yeah, there's a, I'm not saying this is right. I'm just saying this is what's happening is because people are like, okay, I well, need if, the money. If I just have a cold, I don't want to have to stay home, isolate my whole family for two weeks, go get tested. I can't afford to get a babysitter. I can't. You know what I mean? So they're just like, oh, I'm just going to go because that's just what people do. Like it, it is what it, it sucks. I'm not saying what this your friend's coworker did was right because he's probably spreading COVID because you said he did end up getting a test, right? He did. And he has COVID. And he has COVID. So it wasn't a cold. No, it wasn't I a wonder, cold. Anybody who has COVID, I'd like to know, like, can you tell the difference? Like at the beginning signs, do you, can you tell like this feels I, different? I don't know. And I talked to somebody else recently who got really sick in March and ended up being hospitalized and uh, didn't need a respirator, but they were in the U.S. and they didn't give them a COVID test, but they said they've never had a flu like this before. Like yeah. they were like, like 35 years old, so sick they needed to go to the hospital. That doesn't sound typical. Like yeah. But then you look at the Donald Trump who yeah. was what? sick for six seconds well that's the thing about covid that's so weird that people aren't understanding is that it affects people so differently yeah. like what is this i was listening to the joe rogan podcast a couple days ago and he i don't remember exactly how it got brought up or who said this but they were saying there's like and i'm not super into conspiracies believe me but he was saying it almost seems like it was made in a lab because oh, and for fuck's sake i know Amanda. but listen because the way that it's it's like something accidentally got out because the way it affects everybody differently seems so weird because there's people who get it and get over it and then they're fine and then there's people who get it and you know are in bed for two months and still yeah. have a hard time breathing and there's people that are dying from it and it likely does have to do with all the underlying health issues you know i keep telling myself that i have a pretty good immune system yeah. and i'm taking on my vitamins and stuff so i'm gonna fight it off if i get it but it's just like I don't believe in conspiracy theories. I can yeah, just yeah. sort of see that being, oh yeah, like this I, is something that and they- And you know what? You're Maybe you're right. And maybe I just am so tired of hearing about conspiracy oh, I, oh. theories that I'm just like, if you believe in conspiracy theories, I just want to shoot you in the fucking <laughs> believe head. Believe me. Believe me. I don't actually believe this stuff. I just, I, I'm <laughs> okay. doing that devil advocate I'll, I'll, thing I'll again. leave the gun at home then. <laughs> <laughs> We don't have guns. We're Canadian. I was going to say, we're Canadian. <laughs> we don't carry guns. <laughs> you know how I like to look at shit on the internet? <laughs> Porn? <laughs> yes. I do. Okay. Oh, that's another whole topic. That is, yeah. yeah. But no, this time I was just going through, I love, okay, first of all, if somebody was to look at all the groups that I have on Facebook, they think that the, I, there's something wrong with me. Like what I kind of groups are you belong to, like I have this group called Ask Me Anything or uh, Catfish Survivors. Catfish are people who've Ooh. been scammed. Like I've just like, any anything that seems interesting at all, like lesbian, trans community, like I belong to 
every so group. So what is your reason for being part of these groups? <laughs> to snoop on what they say. You know, it's none of your business, right? <laughs> yeah. I know it's none of my business. <laughs> it's none of our business, but I love it so much because... I mean, they let me in, so it's it's their fault. Fair enough. So you're just in there, you're like a perv watching through yeah, the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I kind of have to lie sometimes to get on to the group. To groups. pretend you're trans. <laughs> yeah, or... yeah. So they'll so there's usually three questions that yeah. these groups will ask, like, you know, are you trans? Yes. Or are you bisexual? Yes. I'm I'm not. Or are you a man? Yes. Like whatever the question is, if just I, to get in, just to get into the group, that's like very deceitful, right? What else have you lied about? So much. If I knew you were this capable of lying this easily, I'm then not we'd be sure better friends. No, I'm not sure we'd be doing this. Yes, right now. <laughs> yes. That's what makes me interesting. <laughs> you you're love a me, goddamn liar. <laughs> So, (laughs) okay. So tell me about what you found in one of these groups. So I'm going to read this to you and uh, I'm just going to see what you have to think about it. Okay. Because I love it. I love it. Okay. Last night, my man accused me of forcing myself on him sexually. And I can't seem to shake this feeling of rejection. Ooh. Yeah. We've been together for 15 years and we used to be very passionate and having children are... After having children, our sex life has dwindled, but I've tried to maintain our intimacy because it's very important to me. So this weekend, we had a lot of fun together, which is usually a good warm-up to intimacy. Played pool, which is how we met and have always enjoyed doing together. Went to a friend's birthday, but he wasn't very affectionate at all, and I never attempted to initiate anything. So last night when he said he was going to bed, I felt disappointed that he was not trying to have sex. So I expressed this to him, and he got very annoyed and dismissive. And he said he was tired and not horny and that I was forcing him. After much questions, he admitted to pleasuring himself that morning. He watches porn and masturbates quite often, which at first bothered me. But after many conversations, we agreed. We agreed is not an issue as long as I'm taken care of. That's all in capitals, by the way. (laughs) So when he told me that, I got very upset and I was literally sobbing downstairs while he slept peacefully without a care in the world. I felt so confused, undesirable, betrayed, and rejected. I'm not sure how to get past this. I do not want to leave him. He's my best friend, but the lack of intimacy has me feeling really unfulfilled, and his words hurt me. Any advice, support is appreciated. That's a tough one. Is it? Uh, what, what is your... Okay, so first of all... The undertone here is that she is offended that he's watched porn that day and he, and like I'm not being taken care of, yeah. but he's watching porn and I'm feeling rejected. Well, men watch porn for all kinds of reasons. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like women. So many of these posts that I'm reading are about women who are like, I can't believe my man watches porn when he's yeah. got a perfectly good woman at home. And I'm like, fuck, it's just not the same thing. Like totally. it's... it's and- I ag- I agree with that, but it seems her tone is making me feel like it's like she hasn't been rejected just this one time. Yeah. It's been multiple times. Yeah. And as we've talked about before, being rejected feels like shit. It does. And when you know that they're active, like, it's not like they just have no sexual drive. Yeah. Like, he still wants to come. He still wants to watch porn. He- so then your mind goes to, okay, well, what is it about me? And we're hanging out at this friend's birthday party and you're not being affectionate towards me you know what I mean because like in my mind I I, I get that feeling because it's yeah. like you want to like you were saying you want to feel desired by your partner so if you're playing pool and dancing around and you're not getting that ass grab or that like smile yeah. or whatever and then you come home and you know you're like after a night out that's the best part is like having fucking rowdy sex like, it, it is true and i i can actually feel like when you actually put it that way i can actually feel that rejection because yeah. in my past life i had a very non-sexual partner which yeah. we've discussed and it feels like it hurts you go, every it time so in my what i'm getting from this and the fact that he can like just fall asleep peacefully is he might be over her or over her physically or over having sex with her. But like, the, I'm not saying it can't be fixed. But often when you are sitting there going, oh, my God, yeah. I feel so hurt. And he's gone to sleep. Men are stupid. But, well, that's true. And they have no idea that they've hurt you or offended you because they're, so I'm true. thinking that for him, he's like, okay, like, 
yeah, I got my rocks off earlier today. I'm not yeah. into you right now. I'm not into you at all. What, like, whatever. Yeah. And he just goes to sleep. But what it calls for is a conversation yeah. when you're not hurt. A hundred percent. You know, it, it's like a, hey, I've noticed yeah. you're not really that sexual yeah. these days. And there's a lot of things that make men not sexual, like yeah. stress at work yeah. can cause them to be not sexual. And it, and then, you know, uh, jerking off can be just a, a source of relaxing, you know? Sometimes it's just a habit, too. You're like, I eh, might as well. What else is there to do? <laughs> like, really? <laughs> well, I've never had a penis, but I think that if I did, I well. would, I would, I'd be using it all the time. <laughs> I, know, I know what you mean about, um, like, just assuming that the man is also, like, thinking and focusing on this problem. Yeah. Carson and I got in a fight recently. Yeah. He didn't even really think it was a fight, but in my mind, it was, like, three days later, and I'm like, I know you're still mad. And he's like, what are you even talking about? And I'm like, you've been doing this and this, and, like, it's little things. Like, he'll, like, I don't know, like, not... It doesn't even matter. Like, just yeah. simple things that I take is he's focusing on this thing that happened the other day. And yeah. he's like, I literally have not thought about it. I'm just kind of tired. And, like, I had a shitty day at work. And I feel sick today. Like, you know. <laughs> and do you know how with women we do that, right? Like, we have this thing in our head that we're upset about. And we don't. And, we, and we're like, okay, we're not talking about it. And then it's in our mind. Yeah. And it's, we're thinking about it nonstop. Yeah. And what does this mean? And what does it mean when he said that? Yeah. Or, and it they're like. Over. And men have this thing called the nothing box and they're just, they're is like. Is that a technical term? Yes, it is. And they're just like, what are you thinking about right now? Like nothing. And it's true. Men like, have there's a. There's no fucking possible way that you're thinking about nothing. But they are. They have this vacant empty box, this yeah. compartment where they just live in there floating, thinking of nothing. Or even Kirsten tells me all the time that like, like I did, some, we had some people over and apparently I was calling him out and I was being rude to him. We were playing cards. Were you drunk? Whatever. Of course. I do that all the time when I'm drunk. I get in so much trouble. It was, yeah. Like I was just mm-hmm. kind of, he was being a dick. We were trying to explain the rules to somebody and he was explaining them very badly. Cause you know, the, <laughs> you know the way he explains things. He was explaining how to set up all this shit. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? But anyway, so I was trying to tell him, I'm like, slow it down. Let one of us explain it. Da, da, da. But anyways, apparently that was making him, and fair enough. Like yeah. I kind of was. <clears throat> so in my mind, cause he, I, I could tell he was pissed off at me. Apparently he was over it like the next day. Cause I kind of, I was like, sorry about that. Whatever. I apologize. Yeah. And he got over it. But in my mind, I'm like, he's not over it. He's still thinking about it. And he's like, no, when like I am able to get over things, it's like how me and my brother would punch each other. And then the next day we'd be hanging out. He's like, that's just were what you, guys do. Were you projecting there? Because if he would have apologized to you, would you have been over it as quickly? Like, I'm just wondering. Uh, I, it, I guess it depends on how upset I was and what the situation yeah. was. I don't know if I really... Yeah. I think a genuine... You can tell if an apology is genuine or not. Like, sometimes yeah. you... Okay, I'm sorry. That's like, true. Then I'm not over it. But if it's like a... Yeah, fuck. Like, I, I didn't... I'm sorry. Like, I... Like, it happens to me all the time with him, to be honest. Because... <laughs> but I think that's what makes me so great. Is I will... <laughs> I will be like... Oh, fuck. Like, that was actually really rude of me. Or I did make you feel stupid there. Or I did. Yeah, I was rude to you. I'm like, yeah. I actually am genuinely sorry. And like, you need to, like I told him, I'm like, you need to call me out on that stuff. Because I will continue to do it. I know myself well enough. I will always act that way unless you call me you out. You know, you're it. a little bit of a bitch, which, <laughs> <laughs> okay. When I first met Amanda, it's a really funny story. So we're working together, right? And Amanda's been doing the job. For, I was uh, brutal back then. Th- no, I got to tell you. And I, and I think of it as fond times, actually. <laughs> so I started working there. I knew nothing. I'm I knew nothing. We're both in accounting. And, and I knew nothing about this job at all. And Amanda's the one who's training me. And she has... <laughs> no patience and and if i dare ask a question two times which actually worked out to maybe twenty seven thousand times amanda (laughs) you could just see her like slowing down her breathing (laughs) i don't even think it was that like you're giving me more credit i think it was more like it's sorted alphabetically yes And I would just, and honestly, I just like, Amanda is, you know, like at least six months younger than me. <laughs> okay. She's way younger than me. And I just like, I would look at him and go, oh, she's so cute. Well, you're, a, you're an understanding person because that used to be the way I went through my life. Like I was, yeah. I have so many memories of behaving that way. And I don't, I think having kids kind of calm me down a of little course. bit. Of course. Because yeah. like, even for when I was on mat leave, the woman that I was training, I 
I remember like just being so like I would get her so worked up because I'd be like it's uh, like how do you not know like we just did this yesterday and I would get so frustrated yeah. and I could see in her body language that she was like getting fresh uh, like very like like sometimes she'd be like you know like, grabbing the mouse it's, it's it's time to be trained by Amanda and it would just be like you could see her being like fuck I just need to figure this out on my own and meanwhile I'm just like I just need to show you this and get this so I can, yeah. I can get out of here and go on mat leave I think she still has nightmares about you probably yeah like, I seriously was so fucking mean. And like looking back, I'm like, oh, what? Why couldn't I have just slowed down? Like, but you're a much different person now. I think so. now you're like calm and gentle. Am I? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think I, if I'm training somebody, not that I have, I don't mm. know. Do you think I've changed? I think, bit? I think they don't let you train people anymore. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I think that now I get to train the people, but, uh, we don't have new people anymore. No. So yeah, you know. no. thank Those you, are... COVID. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think, um, I need to know more about that lady's situation. I don't really know what kind of advice, like some of these things people put advice. It's like, I think they just want to vent. I think they do too. Because there's not like, oh, okay, well, here's your answer. A plus because B. there's there's more to the story. Always. You know, like I need to interview the husband and 100%. I need to say, you know, is, is your wife together. is your wife a cunt? Is <laughs> is the real question. Because if that you is why guys don't want to have sex with you usually is you make them feel like less than Okay, men. Let, and let's talk about that. So yeah. what are the reasons okay, so when a woman doesn't want to have sex, yeah. there's so many reasons. So many. <laughs> you looked at me wrong, the yeah. carpet's not vacuumed. <laughs> Huge. Um, I have my period. I have yeah. my period this month. Yeah. Like, there's I ate a burger and cheesecake. Yeah, so I'm I, I feel farty. <laughs> yeah, like, totally. but for men, if you don't, if they don't want to have sex generally, like in a regular yeah. relationship, it's usually because you're a bitch. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you're a bitch to your man, like, and then you're like, oh, but I want to have sex. Okay, newsflash: they're yeah. people too. Yeah. And they need to feel kind of manly and, you know, yeah. like if you demasculate. I did the, that. Yeah, yeah. I used to do that to my ex-husband all the time. Maybe that's why I never wanted to have sex with you. Well, then he should have had <laughs> fucking sex with me and I wouldn't have to demasculate him. Does, I'm, are we saying that word right? I don't think so. Oh, uh, no. What? I think. <laughs> uh, whatever. I'm going to Google it. Yeah. I'm going to Google it. I right used now. to do that with my ex actually too. And it was because I, I just didn't respect him. I thought he was a moron. I really did. So, I, you, and looking back, I know this. At the yeah. time, I didn't. I didn't realize that's how I felt about him. But I definitely treated him that way. I would talk down to him. I would make him feel stupid. And that was a habit. I'm still breaking with Karsten. Like I still. But the thing is, the the difference is, I actually do respect Karsten. I do think he's smart. I, you know what I mean. It's emasculate. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so I try not to emasculate Karsten. Yeah. But I I do it sometimes because that's just like who I am I guess yeah. as a person but like I said the difference is I actually this is one of those things that I'll apologize for because I'll be like I honestly didn't mean to make you feel stupid by calling you out in front of your friends yeah and that, like, that kind of shit like makes a guy be like fuck you like, yeah you know? yeah 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 and uh, I I used to have this girlfriend and she used to so we'd be in a group of people and she would order her husband around like get me a beer <laughs> oh, and and he would and I'd be, and we'd all be like, oh, poor John. If John, if you're listening, we did feel sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, you guys still together, John? No, they're not. Oh, phew. <laughs> Guess why? Because she was a fucking cunt, oh, right? He finally got it together. And- yeah, he finally went okay enough. But it, it was like that. She was constantly ordering him around and being rude to him in front of their friends. And I'm just like, like, would you do that to your friend? That's the thing is like, why do we feel comfortable treating our part people close to us like shit? Like even with my kids yeah. sometimes, like I try not to, but like I've talked to other parents about this too. So hopefully I'm not alone, but sometimes you're just like so mean to the people that are close to you. And yeah. it's like, is it comfort? Cause like I notice even my kids behave shittier when I'm around. It's like, you just act like an asshole around who you're, who you're closest well, to. Well, I think that kids do it because it- they have to, you have to be up, you yeah. know, like when they're in daycare, they have to be nice to the daycare teacher yeah. and to their friends. And when they get home, they can let all their emotions just crash yeah. and you're the safe place to yeah. land. But I think that long-term relationships, so long-term relationship when you've been married young 
and you're with your partner, often we do this dig, dig, dig yeah. to our partner. And like, I don't know, it's like getting off on yeah. the... On the or it be- and it becomes a habit too, the way you treat yeah. people, right? So like if you've yeah. always kind of done it and then it just gets more and more and you let more things slide. I, it- I tend to do things like I like to argue. So <laughs> I don't emasculate anymore. That's something I learned in first marriage to not do anymore. But... If he says black, I say white. If you know what I mean? Like, do you always actually have a different opinion or do you just like to argue? I really think I just, and <laughs> I like to argue. Do you and, only do it with him? Because I don't find you do that with yeah, him. I, yeah, I think that that's huh. true. And then he'll say, why? Like, do why you, are you arguing with me? And I'm just like, because I like to. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a muscle you need to work out and you choose to yeah. do it with him. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So Before you met Greg, who did you do that with? With my husband. So you just argue with everybody. Yeah. Well, with first. my partners. Yeah. So if he would say, oh, I think there's seven feet of snow outside, I'd be like, fuck no, there's two. Like Six that kind of, half. like <laughs> that thing. Like, and I find that so annoying yeah. and other people or, you know, when you're listening to a couple and they're like, oh, you know, that time when they're talking oh. about a particular story and that time when we were in Mexico and this happened, they're like, that didn't happen in Mexico. Yeah. That happened in like, who the fuck cares? It I matters know. nothing to the story. That kind of stuff does make me crazy. Yeah. It's like when you're focusing and you need to correct these tiny little pieces. It's like, no, the point of the story is to like yeah. tell the story. I don't care about the tiny pieces. It's yeah. the same with storytelling. Like some people are really bad at storytelling. Yeah. Cause they'll be like, and then, you know, I opened the door and it creaked a bit. And so then I you have- do this. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> get on with the fucking point. Like get yeah. to the punchline. Get to the meat. I yeah. want to know. I want to know. Did he come or didn't he come? Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Yeah, and that's why we're so good. So, yeah, so I need to know the other half of the story because if a man doesn't want to have sex with you, which is what we're talking about, why? So it's either he's gotten older and and he's not getting an erection or he can't last as long. That could be a thing. Mm -hmm. But my guess is that he's not feeling it. And if he's not feeling it, you need to figure out what you're doing read the room read yeah (laughs) we love that don't we read the room bitch he doesn't want you he's masturbating it depends if it's a one-time situation or if it's happening all the time i think you're likely right so Mm -hmm. that's what you should go back on that group and comment i'm gonna say bitch read the room have you been a cunt lately (laughs) (laughs) because i bet you have because you sound like a bitch you totally do (laughs) We're so mean. Yeah, but really, it's none of our business. No, it is none of our business. <laughs> okay, so since you always find all this crazy yeah. shit on the internet, I thought I would go looking Ew. because it's kind of fun. You're yeah, right. I, I know. This whole creeping on people, not that bad of an idea. Yeah. Have you joined any of these weird groups? <sighs> not really. This is kind of just on the ones I'm already on, or sometimes you'll see a post come up on Facebook or something. I'll like get you there. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll work on you. Send yeah. me some invites. Yeah. I found one that I thought was kind of interesting, though. Okay. Okay. So we're going to call it Broke and in Love. Is it okay if I propose to my girlfriend with the same ring I proposed to my ex? We never got married. So he proposed, the engagement fell through. I say, fuck no. Fiance gave the ring back. Can you back. imagine how mad you'd be? So I have two opinions on this. My initial one is that. Okay. The other side is I am a cheapskate. And it's like, he's never going to be able to sell the ring for, you know what I mean? For what he paid for it. And like, who cares? Okay. It's the same question then. It, this is almost the exact same thing. Then what if you had a wedding dress that you bought thinking you were going to marry fiance a and then he dumped your ass can you still wear it like my instinct says no yeah but then the logical part of my brain goes okay it's one day if you actually like love this person and you're not getting married just for the ring or just for the dress or just for the party or just for the pictures does it matter i don't think it does i don't i don't know i think maybe not i think the dress you're on a line maybe but the ring, I think that you're buying a ring with an intention. So yeah. to me, I'm thinking I'm going to buy this ring for the woman that I love. Yeah. And this is the ring that I'm buying. Like there's like a, a yeah. direct energy or a thought that goes into that ring. Fair. And so then if I receive this ring, I would want to take it and throw it. But Wait, like, what is your feeling? Like <sighs> not logically. But I don't. That's just the way my brain goes. I'm just like. How does it make would, you feel? How does it make you feel? Well, I would. Uh, it's so hard to put yourself in like shoes like that. Cause I'm like, it? It, 
it is for me because I'm like, whatever, man. Like, he already has it. Like, you can spend that money on a house or something or, like, oh, down payment. Okay, so I guess the question is, like, uh, if this ring was $30,000 and you're thinking, like, oh, like... I don't want this thirty thousand dollar ring that belonged to yeah. to Ginger. We'll call her Ginger. And then you you go to pawn it or sell it, and you get ten thousand. Like uh-huh. he's gonna lose so much money because he made a bad decision and proposed to somebody who he wasn't gonna marry, and now he's with hopefully the right person. Okay, That's a whole different. So then thing. you're in a party five years later, and you come across the old fiance, and she's like. Oh, nice ring. Ah, uh, okay. That's a very interesting point. Yeah. Wasn't that my ring, sweetheart? Okay. Yeah. In my, in my fantasy, yeah. you would never see this person. She was like dead. <laughs> okay. That, she's dead. Maybe. <laughs> uh, not even. <laughs> that good point. Cause that would make you feel very, yeah. Okay, fine. And so, I, okay. And I know we're just like, we're talking about ego here. We're talking about, but to me, it's like, would you, okay, would you, if you got yourself a new fiance and you went to his house and he was previously living with somebody else, would you even want to sleep in his bed that he'd been with this other woman? Like, no, I'd be like, it would be toss weird. out the bed. We're not sleeping in that thing. Yeah, fair. Like, fair. It's just an object. It's just yeah, a thing. It's true. Like, definitely sheets and blankets and everything. But bed, I'm like, those are expensive. What if it was <laughs> brand new? <laughs> I don't know. I know. I, I just don't care that much about material stuff, even when it comes to rings and stuff. Like, Karsten didn't spend that much money on my ring. Yeah. And I never, he knows this, but like, I didn't ever really like it that much, honestly. Yeah. He went shopping with my girlfriend, and apparently I told her like years previous, oh, I love that ring. And it was, I don't know. I don't yeah. remember that. But anyway, yeah. so he, yeah. so he did his due diligence. He went shopping, got the ring he thought I would love. He yeah. did a great job. Spent what he could afford at that time. And we always kind of joke about upgrading it, but I'm like, at this point, I don't want to. There's yeah. so many other things I would rather spend that money on. And like a piece of jewelry or even our wedding, we didn't spend that much money. And if I could go back, I would spend even less. I, honestly, I do. I hear you. And I'm I totally on board. I don't care there. about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like the, the marriage to me is like the okay. life we have. So if you don't care about that stuff back to the ring, okay. then why can't your fiance just spend a thousand bucks or 2000 bucks on another ring and just go. He could. It it's could. Done. I think I, I'm curious how much this ring is. If it was only a $1,200 ring to begin with, yeah. it's like, well, whatever. Yeah. But like it, if I'm, if he's thinking like, okay, well, I have this ring that's $5,000 sitting in a drawer that I'm going to sell for, I don't know, a thousand yeah. if he ends up pawning it or something, you get nothing for these things. Yeah. And then I can take that thousand and put it towards like another $5,000 ring. Like if I was him, my mind would just be spinning of like, what all this money for what to prove that I love you. I fucking love you. I'm mar- going to marry you. You, well, know? Then, like, you know, and I feel the same way too. Like uh, the thought of the, how much money my man spends on me for a ring is how much he loves me is complete bullshit. And I don't believe in it no. at all. But so me and my fiance both have old wedding rings like I have yeah. I still have my wedding ring somewhere I'm thinking where the hell is it actually <laughs> and it's diamonds on like the wedding yeah. ring and, they, and I mean maybe I should melt it down and make a new engagement ring like yeah. no yeah. like no I would rather have a $500 ring I see what you're saying yeah then it's, it's not about it could, it's because it's tied to the memories because the... that particular ring that band the, like yeah. the whole thing yeah. it brings back a memory of that relationship okay and so every time you're looking at that ring I would think yeah somebody somebody else wore this ring yeah like if somebody else no, wore that ring that's that's fair enough in yeah. my mind like she never really wore it but you're right like that doesn't make sense like of course it was worn by somebody else yeah I, I would feel this weird thing but then you're talking about objects like the bed so does that <laughs> apply to everything else though like she touched that spatula like, yeah but the they were fucking in the bed not so on the spatula is, yeah but i really bond when we make eggs together in the morning <laughs> like i think that's more intimate than <laughs> sex <laughs> okay maybe you got to get rid of the spatula too <laughs> it depends how intimate your <laughs> egg making is <laughs> But I don't know. I think if you use that same way of thinking with everything, it's absolutely like, get over. I don't know. Yes. I I know. Come on. I think think you got to, you got to give me this. Yeah. I think the ring is a symbol. It's a symbol of your love for somebody else. 
So I think I have this cynical view of other people's relationships. Okay, tell me. So in my mind, I'm like, you don't like each other anyways. You're probably just going to divorce her. So just <laughs> fuck it. Like, I don't know why I think that. Maybe because most marriages end in divorce. And they I do. look around yeah. at all these relationships and I'm like, what are you guys even doing? Like, that's not going to last. I do the same thing. So yeah. I think in my mind, I'm just like, well, this one's not going to last anyways. Just fucking give her the ring until it ends. And then. Oh, <laughs> so that. Okay. But that's like such a terrible way to be. I don't know these people. This is the problem with judging strangers. I want, I want to know when people get married now, do they go, oh, yeah, this is my forever. Like, what? Okay. So when you married Karsten, did, yeah. were you like, yes. I th- this is I my think so. like and I think yeah like but doesn't everybody think that and then like yeah. things but I also think people don't I don't know maybe I, ugh, what the fuck do I know I'm 35 Nothing. almost yeah <laughs> I don't know anything but I'm just like I think a lot of people get married and they don't think about all these things they don't think about like do we have similar interests do we have similar not that interests matter no similar goals in life like do we see ourselves in the same place do we have similar arguing styles are we able to discuss things or does one of us shut down like people don't do any of those that like as you know how against religion I am yeah that's a whole different conversation we can have but what I do like about religion is how they make you do that pre-marriage counseling yeah I did that it's not a bad idea yeah but it's like it obviously didn't work didn't work (laughs) you know I I think my ex-husband said to me you know we took that pre-marriage counseling and they said it was gonna fail I'm like I don't remember that (laughs) <laughs> are you serious that's, well that's his memory but, but I'm in like, your mind you're like i'm getting married yeah i'm getting married to <laughs> the... you hear it you want to hear it too hey you yeah. probably were just doing it because you had to yeah that i want to go back in time and see what they say because that is very interesting like yeah well and i think you can often look at a couple did you ever hear there's that one therapist i don't know his name Dak shepherd talks about him but he um can watch a couple have a conversation for five minutes and with a 90% certainty, he can tell if they're going to last. And he is like bang on because mm. of the way they talk to each other. It has to do with body language. It, it's not have a conversation. It's argue. Um, you can watch them argue. It's like, if you're rolling your eyes, it's like a total yeah. lack of yeah, yeah, I get respect. It. Yeah. And then you're out of there. You know what? Like that is it that goes relationship. Back to the emasculating. Well, mm-hmm. fair enough. But yeah. even if he was rolling his eyes at me, I'd be like, you yeah. don't, you think I'm stupid right now. It's like you're not hearing what I'm saying. Yeah. Right? Like rolling your eyes at anybody. If I'm rolling my eyes at you, it's cause I don't fucking care. Yeah. Like hundred percent. Yeah. So if you're treating your partner like that, like there's a pretty good chance you're not going to make it. Okay. So no eye rolling. What else do I not need to do? Oh fuck. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I it's just but you can I'm sure you kind of can tell with the people that you spend time with right like your um your friends who ended up getting divorced you can look at them and be like you guys are oh really yeah kids. oh yeah or yeah um I find it interesting when the one partner is always complaining about the other one but it's like always the same shit and it's like always. oh well have you talked yeah. to him about it she's like well no like It's not worth it. I don't want to get in the... Because it's no longer... It's one thing to come to your girlfriends and say, this is what's going on in my life. Like, what do you think? Like, is this normal? And it's another thing to be repeating the same bullshit every time you see... And I'm just like, well... What are you going to do yeah. about it? Like, like you're just venting at this point. Yeah. And sometimes maybe that's all they need because people aren't ready to make that decision to move on. Yeah, <laughs> it is. But if when, when you're concerning your friends all yeah. the time in your shit there, and I think they get to a point and then they go see a counselor and then they're like, oh, we love each other so much. And then it starts again. And I know this in my own marriage. Like I had the same marriage with a cycle where it'd be like building up, building up. I fucking hate him. I fucking hate him. Oh, he's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you know mm-hmm. and i and i whenever i see that pattern i know it's doomed mm-hmm. like it's doomed like mm-hmm. it just it can't go on like that yeah. and talking to me about the same issues every time does nothing yeah. like it's either you're talking you, to the wrong person <laughs> you know you know your issues yeah. they're never going to change leave or stay and if you stay that means you have to say i accept it i accept that he's a douchebag he's going to spend my money but i'm choosing to stay because living like that in misery like be angry with somebody all the time do you know how much energy that takes i can't like i spend you know a couple days thinking carson's mad at me when he's not and then i get mad at him because of that it like drains me (laughs) it's it's freaking exhausting i can't imagine so that's my advice that's my marriage advice of the day is like accept it or yeah. leave like yeah. like once you've reached the point of talking yeah. and they say fuck you i don't want to talk anymore yeah. and the cycle you can't keep doing it it's either leave or stay yeah i yeah. agree 
And leaving is hard, especially when you've lived 30 years together or 20 years together and all your income is together and your homes are together. Like that becomes the, that becomes the reason why people don't. Well, isn't that why people stay though? That's, That's such why a good people point. stay. Finances are all tied together. Their lives, their cars, their friends. Like how do you leave? But I mean, Greg's been divorced three times basically. And, and he will tell you that the money is not as important as your happiness. Like how mm -hmm. long can you live miserable? Mm -hmm. Like I did for a long time and it sucks. Like it sucks to be broke, but it sucks even more to live in a life that you hate. Yeah. But I just keep, I like want to go back. I'm like, so why did you marry somebody you weren't compatible with in the first place? Well, <laughs> because I was, question. you know, and, and I think yeah. that when you're in your twenties yeah. and you're like, Oh my God, he's got such a nice penis. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the problem is we put these expectations on these relationships too, or like even on ourselves and we'll say, okay, I met this person. He wants to get married. I want to get married. Yeah. We, whatever. We just do it. You don't do any of the work to figure out if you guys are actually compatible. Next thing you know, you got a couple of kids and a house and all your finances together and you're like literally hate each other. Yeah. And you're stuck. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine that. Like, <laughs> And it's just, it's so common. Yeah. It's so common to be, to you know, I think that when you meet your partner, marry your partner, you're fully aware of their issues. Not always, though. People are, sometimes you're just not aware in general. You know what I mean? Like, people float through life and they're not aware. Like, don't you see that? Well, I'm aware. So if I marry some, like when I look at back at my ex-husband before I married him, I, I can look back and go, oh, red flag, red flag, red flag. But did you know it was a red flag at yes, the time? Yes. And I can actually remember thinking red flag. Like I actually can go back into my mind and go, I remember that red flag. And I remember thinking that. But you but, chose to ignore but, it. It's not that I chose to ignore it. It's, it said, okay, I'm going to accept it because this is who he is and mm -hmm. I need to love him the way that he is. And and that's fine, but y you know who you're getting and it, the problems just tend to perpetuate as they get. As you get older, yeah. these problems don't go away. They get bigger, yeah. you know, but it's, it's like when you're in love with somebody and like, like, I don't know if you remember in the early days and you're just like, I'm just so in love with yeah. them and I can change them or whatever the thing yeah. is. Can't, can't change people. Can't. It's really none of our business. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everybody for tuning in to the None of Our Business podcast with Monica and Amanda. Make sure you follow us on all social media platforms. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Even your Alexa will play us if you, if you ask her to. <laughs> Alexa, play None of Our Business podcast. She'll fucking do it too. Tune in. We'll show you our boobs. Yeah. If you subscribe, the first hundred subscribers will get to see our boobs. It's none of our business. 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 It's none of our business.